Welcome everyone to our lesson on labor economics. In today's lesson, we are going to look at minimum wage legislations. So by the end of the lesson, you will understand the reasons for the institution of minimum wage legislations. And also you will be involved in the growing debate on the impact of minimum wage legislations on the economy. So we have come across this slide before in our previous lecture. We got to understand that employers sometimes may want to exploit workers. They would want to leverage economic conditions and the fact that there is high unemployment and start to pay workers very low wages. So sometimes the government comes in, intervenes in the labor market and then set up what we call a minimum wage to prevent exploitation of employers against uh, workers. And so minimum wage is when the government sets the wage above the equilibrium wage rate. And so it is that very wage that is set by the government below which no employer is supposed to pay their workers. And so if you recall this very diagram that we see on the screen, you notice that we have a minimum wage in, in the green ink, and then we have a line that cuts across the labor demand curve and the labor supply curve. So on the labor demand curve, because the minimum wage cuts across the labor demand curve first, you notice that the labor demand is very, very low, right? But with a minimum wage institution, we do have the labor supply becoming more because minimum wage is actually fixed above the equilibrium wage rate. And so um, wage becomes so high that employers will actually will be demanding fewer workers. That is why labor demand is low. But we have a lot of people because there is the setup of a minimum wage, they want to offer themselves for work. And so labor supply also becomes greater. So here we see that labor supply is greater than labor demand. And so we would have very few people um, actually employed and a large chunk of them will not get employment. So that leads to unemployment. And so this is a very situation that we discussed when we were talking about the equilibrium determination of wages in the labor market in our previous lecture. And so we need to understand the reasons for minimum wage legislation. Why do we have to have a minimum wage legislation? And so the first one is poverty reduction. So there are instances where minimum wages are fixed, which are set above the equilibrium wage rate, and that intends to increase the salary or the wages of workers. And so the intention is to lift workers out of poverty so that workers can actually earn a decent standard of living. So even those who actually earn lower wages can also benefit from minimum wage and experience a, a higher wage rate uh, for the work that they do. Another case is wage fairness. So minimum wage is also set up to address the income inequalities that exist. Now we have instances where some people are actually high skilled that they are earning very high wages. Um, two years ago, we, we had the news that, for instance, the governor of the Bank of Ghana earned something around 80,000 Ghana cities a month. And then we had some of these dignitaries and the salaries that they actually received, which were so much higher. But we can look at the salary of a teacher at a senior high school, which at that time was even around 1,800, although there has been an increase, and I think it is around 2,200 Ghana cities per month. So you can see that very huge wage gap. So minimum wages are normally set up in order to close that gap or to address that inequalities in the income distribution uh, between what, like for instance, a governor of the Bank of Ghana may be receiving and what a teacher in the senior high school may also be receiving. And so that ensures that there is fair compensation for the labor of workers. Another one too is wage stabilization. So minimum wage offers what we call stability in the sense that during periods of economic downturns, when the economy is receding or is in recession, that there is not so much economic activity. Businesses are producing goods and services, but the goods and services are not really being bought on the market. So they are losing out. And so they have to lay off workers and they also have to cut down the wages. These are some of the instances of when there are periods of economic downturns or economic recessions. But minimum wage actually prevents businesses from from decreasing their wages because you cannot come below that wage that has been set up. So even during periods of economic downturns, the minimum wage serves to provide stability and protect workers' uh, right to fair compensation and, and the level of wage that they actually receive. And so 
it also offers to um, stabilize the, the wages of workers. Now there is a growing debate, okay? There is a growing debate on the institution of minimum wage. And we are going to have that sort of debate over here. We are going to look at the economic effects or impact on employment and a number of factors. And so we are going to look at those who actually argue for minimum wage legislation, and then those who also argue against the institution of minimum wage legislations. So let's look at the economic effect of employment and let's understand the debate. And so for those who are arguing for an establishment of minimum wage in terms of employment or its impact on employment, they argue that minimum wages lead to a rise in income for low paid workers. So those who are actually giving very low wage rates would end up also having a, a, an increase in their wages. And so that leads to uh, an increase in income for them. Right. So the impact on employment is very positive, according to uh, the, those who make such an argument for minimum wage legislations. And then we have critics who also actually argue that when the minimum wages are high, it may actually lead to job losses because um, employers may not be able to pay all the workers and may not even be able to employ uh, more workers. And so sometimes um, there are a lot of people that are not employed and even those who are actually employed, they, they can also experience layoffs when minimum wages are very, very high. And so this actually tends to increase the unemployment situations, uh, especially when the employers want to cut down their cost of production or the cost of labor. And so that is also the argument against uh, the setting up of a minimum wage. We also look at the impact on wage distribution. So those who argue for, uh, well, for the impact of minimum wage legislation on wage distribution actually contend that minimum wages can help to reduce the income inequality by raising wages for low income workers. So we have instances, like I mentioned before, we have instances where uh, some workers may be receiving very high wages and others very low wages. And so when we set up a minimum wage, we kind of experience an increase in wage for even those who have uh, who are earning um, lower wages. So it can help to close that gap, though, that inequality that exists between the wages received by somebody supposedly who is high-skilled labor and then somebody who is low-skilled labor. So, and critics also argue that higher minimum wages may also narrow the gap between low-skilled workers and then high-skilled workers. So for instance, if you happen to be a teacher in a senior high school, and then you are receiving something like, let's assume that the minimum wage in Ghana is 70,000 Ghana cities a month. And the governor of Bank of Ghana is also earning 80,000 Ghana cities. So there is only a difference of 10,000 Ghana cities. So when the minimum wage becomes so high, it may actually prevent the teachers of senior high schools to advance their skills in order to seek positions like the governor of the Bank of Ghana, all right, or any position in a very reputable institution in a country. So you would notice that it will narrow that gap that exists between those low-skilled workers and higher-skilled workers such that even the low-skilled workers may not be willing to pursue further education or improve their skills and also become high-skilled workers because the wage gap is just so small. So that is also the argument against in terms of wage distribution. Now, when it comes to the impact on inflation and prices, um, those who argue for minimum wage legislation point out that when there is a setup of minimum wage, the wage becomes higher because it is above the equilibrium wage rate. And that means workers are earning higher income now, and so they are able to spend more. So it increases consumer spending and it, in it increases their demand for goods and services. Okay, and so when that happens, that also leads to higher revenues for businesses because now people will be able to purchase their goods and, and services. But for the argument against it, increase in minimum wage can also lead to inflation because if you have higher income and a lot of people are spending more and there is increased demand for goods and services, naturally it drives prices up. And sometimes to um, employers or businesses may want to pass on such higher labor costs because now that uh, employers, uh, em sorry, now that employees are paid much more higher, they would want to shift the labor cost burden onto the consumers by increasing the prices of goods and services. So it actually can lead to inflation if care is not taken. If you also look at the impact on labor market efficiency, the argument for it is that minimum wages can tend to boost employees' morale. And that means they would be able to put in their best 
and work much more and and that improves productivity and a low turnover so when we talk about turnover we are looking at the likelihood that a worker may exit from from their job and so you'll notice that not many people will actually be leaving their jobs because uh, minimum wage has made it much more um, convenient for them to earn higher wages but when we look at the arguments against it higher minimum wages will create an incentive for workers to actually stay in low wage jobs because the person may be earning low lower wages but once the minimum wage says to increase the the minimum wage if the minimum wage is higher enough then people will not be convinced people will not be incentivized to seek better education to improve or advance their skills in order to get high skilled labor jobs they will not do that because uh, the difference between what they are earning now and what they will be earning as a high skilled labor is just so small that they will not see any importance in trying to update their skills. So they will be comfortable where they are because down they are earning higher wages. So even those who are actually in low wage jobs by benefiting from higher minimum wages, they, they will not be willing to advance their skills. And that will hinder what we call labor market mobility. So these are the arguments uh, on the impacts, okay, well, these are the, this is the growing debate that exists on the impact of economic wage legislation on the various factors that we have mentioned. So at this point, I will thank you all very much for the attendance and I will be taking your questions.